Hi, I'm Gareth, a teacher and teacher trainer based in Prague. Recently, I've been working with the new interactive whiteboard technology, and I'm here today to show you how an interactive whiteboard can help you in the classroom. Interactive whiteboards are a little scary when you first come across them, but actually they're a very effective tool, and they're very easy to use. The whiteboard is just a screen that can communicate with your computer. That means that anything you have on your computer, you can use in the classroom. So you can use video, internet, or ready-made materials. The most important thing is that you can edit what's on your computer at the board, which means either you or your students can play around with things that are on your computer. Most teachers say to me, well, why should we use an interactive whiteboard? And I ask them what they can do with their normal boards and show them how the interactive whiteboard can do it better. The first thing they say they do on a normal board is that they write on it. Well, you can write on an interactive whiteboard. Like that. What you can't do on your normal board is then move this around. So you could start off with it in the center and then move it into the corner. You could also make this bigger and smaller. You could also turn it around. And you can also flip it so it's backwards. This means you could play lots of little vocabulary games with your students. Try to guess the word when it's very small. Try to guess the word when it's backwards. Guess the word when it's upside down. You can also then change this into text, which I think is fantastic. You can then save this as well. So you save it, and then you can come back to it in another lesson. Now, something I find frustrating when I'm using a normal whiteboard is that I write all over the right whiteboard, and then I want to write something else. I've got no space for it. With this whiteboard, I can just click on there, and I've got a clean, uh, clean page. I can then go back to my previous page. And so I never have to wipe anything off my whiteboard ever again. I can always come back to it and save it. The other thing you can do is prepare lessons in advance. So using this tool, this brings up a text box, and then I can use my keyboard and type things in. I can then use the pens to write over the top of this. Can I help you? Can I help you with the, inter with the uh, intonation patterns? Or I can use the highlighter pen to highlight words I want students to focus on. I can also then put in lines if I want to. Yeah, nice straight lines. And you can also put in shapes. Once you put in the shape, you can make it bold or fill it like that, which means then you can create little gap fill activities. You can also make this bigger and smaller to fit over your words. Now, another thing teachers like to do with their whiteboards is put pictures on them. So they'll put a picture and maybe write around the edges or have words that they match with the pictures something you can do with a whiteboard. With an interactive whiteboard, you can do this digitally. Here we've got a gallery with loads of different pictures. Or you can put pictures in from your own uh, My Pictures section of your computer. Here I'm going to put in a picture of Europe. Once I've got that picture, again, I can make it bigger or smaller. I can put in arrows to point to different areas. Of the, of the map, or I can write around it, so uh, Wales, Czech, etc. So you can do that with pictures. With the pictures, you can do ready-made activities. So here I've got a picture, and then here I've typed in some words earlier, and now I can match the words to the places on the picture. Oh, feet. And then here, there we go. 
And so that's how we can use pictures. So that's some of the things you can do with the text editors that come with the interactive whiteboard software. Also, most interactive whiteboards come with other tools. One thing to show you is that you can actually make this the full screen. So we can make this a full screen like that. Um, now, as I said, the tools. The first tool I want to show you is the Spotlight tool. The Spotlight just makes a little part of your screen visible to the students. You can make the part as big or as small as you want, and you can move it around like that. This means you can focus the students on one part of the board, or you can play little guessing games where you can get students to try and guess what's in the picture. The shape of your spotlight can change. You can have a circle or a rectangle. The second function that I would like to show you is the screen shade. The screen shade covers your board, but it means you can reveal it bit by bit. So here, I can pull the screen down, or pull it up again, or pull it in from the side, and push it back again. This is great if you're doing feedback with your class, because you can show them one answer at a time. Or it's great if you want the students just to look at one part of the board. Finally, it's great, again, if you want to play a little guessing game. Guess what's in the picture, what's it a picture of, what's it a picture of, what's it a picture of. So that's the, the reveal section. Also, up here, we have this little camera. The camera allows us to take a photo of other things that are on the screen. So if I close that, take this, I can take a photo of these. This captures the image to the notebook software, and then I've got it in my software, which means I could label this and talk about this with my students. So it's a good way to get pictures into your text editor. So that's some of the functionality of the whiteboard built in. Now I'm going to show you my top tips for using the whiteboard. And I'm going to use the reveal screen to show you how it would work for something like feedback. Firstly, try to get as much practice as possible. Practice makes perfect, they say. Using the whiteboard looks scary, but actually, when you get to use it and play with it, it soon becomes second nature. Secondly, try to appeal to all the learning styles. Whether people like to touch things and play with things, whether people like to hear things, whether people like to see things, the whiteboard can cater to all those different learning styles. Thirdly, think about your classroom setup. Try not to have a barrier between the students and the board. Quite often I see a classroom with a desk here, which stops the students feel, feeling that they can come to the board. Next, try not to allow the, the, the board to make the class a teacher-dominated lesson. Quite often I see teachers standing at the board, using the board, talking to the students. We want the students to be using the board themselves and still talking to each other. And finally, try not to overuse the interactive whiteboard. It's a great tool, but it shouldn't be overused. You should use it when it will make the lessons as effective as possible. So what can we use on the interactive whiteboards? Well, to start off with, you can use different videos. You can put the DVD into your computer. You can use the screen so the students can see it. You can stop the DVD. You can draw speech bubbles. You can write over the screen, etc. Secondly, you can use the internet. I quite often, if a student asks me a question, I'll stop, look something up on the internet so everybody can see the answer. Obviously, there's Oxford University Press websites. So you can use the games, the grammar exercises, the vocabulary exercises that are there. Next, there's multi-ROMs. The multi-ROMs that come in the back of your course books are great for using on the interactive whiteboards. And finally, there's the new Oxford iTools material, which is being designed specifically for use on the interactive whiteboard. I said earlier that you shouldn't overuse your interactive whiteboard. So what are interactive whiteboards good for? They're great for doing grammar presentations. It means you can get a good, clear model up on the whiteboard, which your students can then write down in their notebooks. 
Secondly, they're great for doing feedback. It means you can either reveal the answers stage by stage, have the answers up on the whiteboard, or get the students to come and write the answers on the whiteboard. Thirdly, they're great for playing class games. They really bring games alive, and the students love getting up and playing with the whiteboard. And finally, they're great for looking at pronunciation features. You can mark word stress, sentence stress, intonation, connected speech, and the students can see the pronunciation features on the whiteboard. Thank you for watching this demonstration, and I hope you now feel more comfortable using interactive whiteboards in your classroom.